Hey everybody, it's uh, me, Super Paul Games. So I thought I'd play You Are a Horse. Much different than the game You Are a Whore. <sighs> Somebody needs to make that game. There's some people I would love to send that to. But uh, in the meantime, let's experience being a horse. You are a horse. Run in a field or rob a bank. That's me pictured, apparently. <laughs> we gotta rob a bank. Or do we run in a field? That seems like a very horse thing to do. We're gonna rob a bank. This is it. The time is now. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger. The place is a bank. The job is a bank robbery. The time is when the bank is open, which is now. So up to this point, everything is going according to plan. Who walked? In, who, who made this plan? You walk inside wearing your dark blue horse jacket and opaque aviator sunglasses, giving a few mild nods to the sparse amount of customers inside and to the teller who calmly but quickly approached. I must live in the sticks if they're used to a horse coming in and uh, depositing carrots or whatever. The time was now before, but now it's even more now than it was a moment ago. That seems like the now of action. When you get up to the teller, they ask you how they can help you. You give a small, short snort, and then you slip them a note. This is a robbery, it says. They look down at it, then back at you, then back at the note, then back at you. You slip them another note. I have a gun, it says. I hope they don't realize that a horse doesn't have fingers nor an opposable thumb to be able to operate said firearm. They look back to you, you jerk your head downwards to draw your attention lower. You do indeed have a gun. It's a car MPM9. I'm not familiar with that model. Fully loaded, attached to the side of your leg with a messy application of transparent tape you brought you bought at an often office max a week ago. So I'm a horse, I got a gun, I taped it to my leg. Why do I want money? Once the teller gets a good look at the gun, the look back up to you once more, you slip them a third and final note. So if you could start piling a bunch of money into a large bag, with or without a big dollar sign on the front, I'm not picky about that, that'd be great. Come on, I'm a horse robbing a bank, have some respect for me. Don't ride me. I rode your mom last night, teller, now put some money in the bag. With that done, you take a moment to get a better sight of inside the bank itself and the customers here. Inside the bank, there is you, the teller, and three customers. Um. Hmm. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's glance over to customer number three. There's one more customer wearing a large Chicago Cubs jacket and a matching hat. They're parked around that area with all the various slips you can fill out before you do anything at the bank. Four legs, long mane, and the fur, they look a lot like you, honestly. They ask if this is going to take long. You tell them it probably won't. Great. They tell you and sip a cup of coffee. It's a horse bank. Back to the robbery. Let's investigate customer number two. There's a customer sitting down with a tablet playing what appears to be a ripoff of Sim Tower. Honestly, it looks pretty fun. She's small, short in height, tiny frame, wearing two hoodies, one pink and one black, with her legs crossed as she lounges near the entrance of the bank. Tight cropped blonde hair and look on her face that shows only mild interest in the robbery in progress around her. She waves to you once, you nod your head, she returns to her game and sips a cup of coffee. Alright, let's check out the first customer. Um... There is a customer over by the front who's drinking a coffee from the free coffee pot every bank you've been to has. You're unsure if they ever actually change it and brew a new pot, but it seems to never run out of coffee. He's short, he looks to be in his early 20s, has an angular face with an angular black hair, seems to work out, and from the looks of this shirt, probably works at Little Caesars down the street. I had some Little Caesars earlier. Hmm. I wonder if customer, num customer number three is like an FBI horse. He appears to have no interest in stopping you from robbing the bank. How you doing? He asks and then sips it back. Um, his other hand in his jeans pocket. You tell him you're doing fine and not to make any sudden moves. He nods his head and says, can do, buddy. And continues to sip his coffee. Hmm, let's check our status. Uh, you wish your status screen was not so much of a mess. Not sure what most of these stats mean. Uh, I think these are horse races. I don't... Uh, is that me, Greenspring? I don't... I don't even know. Um, let's have a conversation with the teller. What is taking her so damn long? I want my money! I want some sugar cubes, bitch! I'm addicted! <laughs> uh, the teller looked to be in her early to mid-thirties. I wonder if she's single. She had curly dark, dark brown hair. On her head or in her, you know where. Wide shoulders, maybe she's a linebacker. And a round, soft face with an expression that showed no fear of you. 
nor did it show any interest in trying to stop you from robbing the bank blind. In fact, if anything, she seemed to be jealous of you. Of course, I've got my long flowing mane and my aviator glasses. Ride me, tell her to freedom. Um, like she imagined doing this thing dozens of times, which she had. She was a little tired and gently sipping away at a half full cup of coffee before she responded to you. I wonder if this game is, like, made by Juan Valdez, because everybody's drinking coffee in this game. So, uh, so, uh, do you want that in ones, tens, twenties, hundreds, or what, hon? I'm not going to bother with any coins except quarters, mind you. I don't think you want them either. Um, yeah. You let her know that anything's good, and she casually starts to pile the money into the bag. You want me to remove the die pack? Wow. Wow. Wow, this is good customer service! I, if I wasn't robbing this bank, I would come back to this bank. Even when you rob them, they're like, you don't want that in there, do you? You ask her what a die pack is. It's a thing that explodes all over the money and lets everyone know that the money was from a bank robbery. Kind of a pain to deal with, honestly, especially when you want to use the money. Um, y yes, I'm going to let her know that's great. She whistles the theme to Sanford and Son while she keeps dumping random wads of bills into the bag, occasionally stopping to take a die pack out. Inside the bank, there's just you and the tellers. And three customers. Um. Where did he did all that, though? Uh, what? Am I stuck in some sort of... Oh. Uh, okay, so we go to the status screen, and I can click out of the status screen, or let's check to make sure I'm still in our, You Are a Horse. I am! Oh, I'm still playing You Are a Horse! Alright, let's get back to work. Inside the bank, it's just you, the teller, and three customers. And you're hearing right now some new guests. Guests with sirens that blared and whined as they came up the street. Fuck, it's the cops! Sound of those sirens could only mean one thing. The police were already parked outside. That damn teller, she alerted them. Or was it one of the customers? I should trample them all. <laughs> Dozens of them, your hopes for a quick and easy escape. Get away, we're looking more and more impossible. You expected a high-speed chase at most, but things were rapidly accelerating to the point of desperation. They leaned on their squad cars, talking to each other, casual and carefree. What were they planning, you wondered? How were they thinking up how to take you down and take you in? Suddenly the radios in the cars crackled to life. I didn't do it, I'm innocent. All units, all units, this is a bank robbery in progress at the corner of 36th Street. No, and then another 36th Street. Why do they... Uh, whoever named these streets are an idiot. Suspect I uh, unidentified, believed to be tall, long, strong, with four massively powerful hooves. It might be my girlfriend. <laughs> we've we've got to get them. Oh, we got to get there now. Showed one of them, obviously the head of the bunch, not wearing a uniform, just a long beige coat of a rumpled age gray suit on a grizzled, worn-down body. They all piled into their cars, shouting and rambling on the whole way. Rambling, the whole way. Uh, then they drove off. What? Sirens blaring, pulling hard right at the corner? Oh, we must have been at the cop shop, and then we're looking at it from their point of view. Then a hard ride to the next corner, a hard ride at the corner after that, a fourth hard ride at the last corner. Wait, did they just drive in a circle around the block? And a fourth hard ride at the last corner, coming to a dead stop right in front of you. Good God, how did they get here so fast? Damn it, cops. I'm just trying to make a dishonest living here. I just want to go home and have some crack horses and, uh, you know, sugar cubes. Uh, you have to consider your options carefully if you want to get out of here alive and stay filthy rich. I'm already filthy, now I just need the rich part. With the cops at the ready outside, guns drawn, and waiting for you to make a first move. Oh, they want me to ask them out. You know that there's more than one way out of this. I'm not blowing them. But you've got to consider them all carefully. Let's see, I can go out in the street and start shooting wildly. Negotiate with them to see if I can get a free car out of this. Go back inside and ask everyone else how you could have done this crime better. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm a horse. I'm a horse. Not going to say anything. Lacking any better ideas and figuring they might go away if you don't do anything and pretend you're not there, you stay silent. Getting comfortable inside the bank, you while you waited for this devilish little plan to pay off, you huffed and sat down, occasionally flickering your attention to the windows to see if they had shrugged their shoulders packed up and left off to find a crime somewhere else. This one, 15 minutes. Interesting. I, I kind of was thinking I would just walk out as a horse. And no response, Chief. Officer Telly Savalas tiredly spat out. What are we going to do now? Chief Maxwell put his hands on his hips. Because he's a sassy fellow and sighed out, knowing full well he was the, in the most delicate situation. 
Well, uh, don't make any sudden moves. Well, we're obviously dealing with a criminal mastermind. One might try... Uh, they might try anything to get past us. Uh, so what are you thinking, Chief? I think we need to get to the mind of the thief. I think we need to consult an expert. He narrowed his eyes, nodded his head slowly, and tightened his fingers around his hips. I think I know who to call. A minute later, your cell phone rang. Oh, shit. Is this literally a... I'd say it's a one-horse town. Ha <laughs> ha, the rim shot. But I realized there was another horse in here. I better answer my phone. You're the chief on the other end. This one's seriously, buddy. Uh, we got a volatile hostage situation mixed up in a bank robbery down at 36 and the other 36. No idea what the suspect's gonna do next. You listen very intently. We could use your expertise. He lets out quiet and stressed. You tell him this sounds like a dangerous one. Life or death situation. It is, he replies, weary. You can practically taste the sweat on his brow. You let the chief know that you'll be right over. How do I get out of here to walk next to him? In ten minutes, you're coming up behind the other officers. Ew. Ew, that's gross. Once he can hear your trotting feet, the chief turns around. How do I... Do, did I go out the back door? Did they not cover the back door? And I just walk up and be like, What's up, chief? And you can see a wave of relief spreading over his whole body. Is that like he's peeing himself? And you can see it spreading? Oh, thank God you're here. This, uh, this damn robbery is a powder keg uh, just waiting to go off. You nod your head and you tell the chief you do everything you can to help. What I want is for you to use all of that talent, all that experience you have with jobs just like this one, and tell us everything you can about the perp. Uh, you stare out at the bank and roll your head side to side, occasionally scratching your chin while you puzzle this one out. Eventually, you give some terse, serious nods. The chief and all his fellow officers stare at you anxiously, waiting on your every word. I'm a horse. I don't know how to talk. I have notes. First off, you tell them they're dealing with what appears to be an absolute criminal mastermind. An officer so frantically jots down this in his notebook, giving no time for neatness. Everyone else uh, nods once in simultaneous formation. Once you continue, this bank robber is probably incredible dash incredibly dashing and daring. He probably looks good. A debonair flair to all their tricks, they leave their pursuers scratching their heads, wondering just how it is they did it. Everyone else nods again all at once. Thirdly, this criminal appears to be so brilliant and amazing and acrobatic and athletic and heartwarming that they probably stand no chance of getting close to them. You cops don't. Much less arresting them. You should all probably give up and go home right now. Everyone nods together once more. Uh, thanks for your help, the Chief says, slapping you gently on the side. I mean that. Uh, it's not appropriate to go around slapping people just because I'm a horse. You tell them there's no problem and shot off into the distance. Uh, which you then circle back from and head into the bank. Oh, because I still got to get my money out of there. With the cops at the ready outside, guns drawn, and waiting for you to make a first move, you know that there's more than one way out of this, but you've got to consider them all. Well, what did I do before? I'm not going to start shooting wildly. Did I go back inside before? I'm really confused. Okay, we're going to go back inside and ask everybody. I'm like, this isn't going well. What have you done? You're naturally frustrated. You went into this robbery plan with careful consideration. You brought a gun, for example. You also told the teller that this was a robbery. You figured you had it all sewn up. Damn it, horse. You have a horse brain. It's more to it than that. Hindsight 2020, bank robberies and all that. So in the case of future robberies, you obviously won't want to make the same mistake twice. Looking around, the bank still has all the same people in it. They must have some ideas on what you could have done better, more efficiently, to rob the bank. You figure you can crowdsource some. Everyone looks to you silently curious. You ask them if any of them have any bank robbery ideas that could lead to you avoiding the police this time that you could use in the future. There's silence in the room for a while. They all seem to be considering it. All from different walks of life. All of them naturally have different ideas on how to rob a bank. Eventually, the spe teller speaks up. You ever seen that Bruce Willis movie, Bandits? Actually, I think I did. Isn't that the one with him and um, Billy Bob Thornton and that chick, Chicky McGee? You shake your head now. Well, she says, holding a pen in her right hand and rolling it around in the air. What they do in that movie is find out the bank manager's name, where they live, and they go there the night before the robbery, basically holding them hostage. Then the next day, they have the manager walk them into the bank so they can walk out with all the cash. It always looked really clever to me. It does sound really clever, you tell her. You ask her where the manager is now. Manager's out sick today, she tells you. Oh, 
That plan's not gonna work. It wouldn't work anyway, because we're already in the bank. Not today, anyway. Uh, wasn't Bobcat Goldthwait in that movie? Asked the customer with a little Caesar shirt. No, it was Billy Bob Thornton. The teller shoots back quickly. See, I was right. I don't know, I probably saw that on TV. You know when they have the movies that don't do so great? And it's like Saturday night and the networks are like, what's cheap to show? I'm almost certain it was Bobcat Goldthwait, the customer keeps on, eyes rolling up to the ceiling and thought. Billy Bob Thornton and Bobcat Goldthwait are completely different actors, said the teller. Billy Bob Thornton did Jiggle's voice in Princess Monaco. Bobcat Goldthwait has a voice that goes really high and anxious and sounds like it's going to crack. And he was in that show with the rabbit. Are you sure? I'm almost certain it was. Oh, God. No, I'm trying to rob a bank, and you morons are arguing about films. Billy Bob Thornton was in the movie Baron. It's not Bobcat Goldthwait, said the customer with the tablet. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be that. Well, I checked it on Wikipedia just now. And I am DB? I am DB is going to tell you the same thing I just did. Wow. Well, speaking of bank robbery flicks, I liked wisdom, said the Little Caesars customer, surrendering the Billy Bob Thornton Bobcat debate. There's still an awful lot of cops outside with an awful lot of gum guns. So far, these people have not helped me at all. You asked them if that was the Bruce Willis flick, too. Now, you probably think of Hudson Hawk. Wisdom's the one with Emilio Estevez. I don't even... I don't, I don't even know Wisdom! You asked him what Emilio Estevez did in the movie to rob banks. Maybe he had a good idea. He goes on a total spree, getting bigger and bigger with it. Even has a rifle or something at one point. But he's not so much robbing banks. His focus is on erasing loan and mortgage records to buy time for people who are indebted to them. That doesn't help me, I'm a horse! Just wants sugar cubes! But that didn't really help me with ideas for robbing banks, but it did sound like a cool movie. This Let's Play Twine brought to you by Wisdom by Emilio Estevez. And a nice uh, thing for people, and a nice for the people focus for bank robbing. What? You might consider it in the future. Anyway, eventually he and his girlfriend, his partner in crime, catch the attention of the FBI. She kills a sheriff and they try to make it to the Canadian border, but it all ends up going south. You mean they were going north. Uh, uh, uh. She gets winged, he drops her off with a teacher to heal up and stand her the radar. He ends up at a football field and gets shot like a million times and dies. Should have gone to a hockey rink. Because he mighty dogs are. Uh, you tell him that's a pretty interesting ending. But then he wakes up and turns out it was all a dream before his job interview. You tell him that's really a bullshit ending. That would be a bullshit ending. The man in the Little Caesars shirt concedes that. Even though he likes the flick, that ending was pretty bullshit. <laughs> Everyone agrees that the idea from Bandit seems like a good one for any future bank robberies you might try. Ah, uh, back to dealing with the cops. Well, I can negotiate with them and go out and shoot wildly. Considering I don't have any fingers, I think I might as well negotiate with them. Negotiation! That's where the real score is! Lots less gunfire and more cops giving you things! I would like um, a little Caesar's pizza and a cake and a horse tug job from a sexy lady cup. Great cop, not cup. I don't know words. Great, wonderful. You tell the guy with the Little Caesar shirt to come out with you to help handle taking and talking to the cops. <laughs> he shrugs and like, sure, uh, why not? I, I'm not busy. He means it too. Wow, he's in this town, man. Coming out the door, the chief is at the ready with a megaphone while everyone else has their guns anxiously hanging around. Oh, their hands hanging around their guns. I'm sorry. You mixed up criminal? Don't you know crime doesn't pay? He shouts into it and lets off on the trigger. I'm not the robber. I'm just talking for him. Your hostage assistant negotiator shoots back. What? The chief asks. Hmm. Can I pin it on this guy? Your negotiator clears their throat and hollers, I'm not the robber! What? The chief repeats. I can barely hear you. The customer waves his hands in front of his mouth and then shrugs. The chief nods and jerks his head to a fellow officer. Go get those guys a megaphone. Really? I think we should just run out. We should run to the officer and be like, this guy did it. I have to take this unrelated bag I'm holding away for other reasons. Officer Turtle briskly jogs out, handing a smooth, pretty, white and seafoam green megaphone to the customer. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then just as sprightly jogs back, coming back around the barrier of the cop cars, your assistant fumbles with the handle for a little bit before finally putting it up to their mouth, pulling the trigger and hollering, Thank you! You're welcome, the chief replies. Now what are your demands or wants or general desires? World peace? I mean... 
I'm going to mock their ability to bench press weights. That's the first thing I saw. Foregoing standard negotiating tactics, you cut straight to the hearts and relate to the chief that you bet he can't bench 50 pounds. What the hell does that have to do with anything? He demanded, but you were on phase. You pressed down, you hit harder, and declared that you probably can't even bench 30 pounds. I could bench, I could bench press tons of pounds, he howled, scowling at you and hissing between senses. I bet I could do way more repetitions than you can. Now you've got him right where you wanted. Smugly, you ask him exactly how much he can press Prench and how many reps he can do. Your master plan is coming together. Can you lift, bro? Like 300, probably, both weights and reps. You're not going to do 300 reps of 300 pounds. You kind of want to claim that you bet you can do 1,000 pounds and 10,000 reps. Yeah, I can do 10,000 pounds and like a billion reps. Sweat dripping down his brow, his mouth contorted into a furious glower. He was worked up, he was good and pissed about your claims about weights and reps. And now for the killing blow. You look to your negotiation assistant and give him a tight nod. He gives one in return and activates the megaphone while you plan to wrap this up. If that's the case, why don't you put your money where your- Wait, I think that's us. If that's the case, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? And we all go to the gym and do a bunch of bench presses. <laughs> Oh, uh, well done, horse genius. When the horse came up to the cops and he was like, The guy you're facing is probably way smarter than you. I thought he was just bullshitting to get out. Turns out he might be right. Yeah, why don't we do that? Uh, why don't we, little big smart mouth jerk? 30 minutes, Judge Jim, be there. Throwing the megaphone to the ground, he whirls his fist in the air and barks his words to his officer. Come on, everybody, we're going to the gym. They all pack into the squad cars with a distinctly indignant sound of the door slamming, slamming on the brakes and yelling into the air about reps and, reps and weights as they drive off to the gym. I'm gonna kick his ass. Yeah, you go into chief. You and your customer slash hostage slash assistant stay right up to the uh, stay right on the entrance to the bank, watching them go and all the dust they left behind. Once they disappear into the horizon, he put his hands on his hips and made a popping sound with his lips. Huh. You say thanks to your teller and all the customers and wish them all a good day. Good day, sir. And they wish you one as well. The teller asks if you want coupons to lose bagel shop, but you pass on it. With enormous bags of cash dangling off your sides, you trot out of the bank, down the street, and out of town, thinking on just what you're going to do with your life now. Meanwhile, at Judge Jim, roughly 30 sweaty cops were swearing and lifting weights nonstop. <laughs> you're doing a great job. Oh man, I'm gonna kick his ass! Do you lift a brow? That, that horse is gonna be so mad when he sees how much we can press! Will I now? Congratulations, you're truly a horse! That's right, I'm a rich motherfucking horse now, son! Gonna have my crack horses all around, sugar cubes all over, and my horse stable den. It's gonna have glitter and a disco ball. And those cops, man. Apparently you want to rob a small town bank with cops who think they can lift. He truly was a horse genius. Well, everybody, if you want to try being a horse yourself, uh, there's a link in the description. Or, I don't know, get a carrot and run around. Put a saddle on yourself. I don't know. Maybe someone will ride you. <laughs> I'll see you all later. Thanks for hanging out.